Will your ships be bigger than my ships? The size doesn't matter, dude. This is the review for the board game Shipwrights of the North Sea. The good and bad about it. By the end of this video, you will know if you should set sail for this game. We have six windy questions that we will answer in this video, but before we do that, Giannis, what is this game all about? It's all about drafting. Drafting cards, drafting more cards, drafting cards is all you do. Well, That's actually just half of the game. Yeah. Less than a half of the game, Giannis. This game is set in the times of Vikings, and you are building a fleet. Like anything in life, victory points is what matters. And each of the things you build give you victory points or give you options to get victory points. These yellow markers on all the cards almost are the victory yeah. points. Ships by far give you the most. And when you play out five rounds, you see who has the most points. Each round is divided into two parts. The first part being each player gets six cards and then we will just draft them. We pick one, pass to the other player, pick one and we continue this way until we have you guessed it, six cards. After that, we all simultaneously can play those cards. And here comes the unique part about this game. Each of the cards can be used in multiple ways. You can discard it for this little resource on the right side of the card, or you can play it into your tableau, get more resources, or maybe that's the ship you wanna build. There are a ton of resources that all go into building ships, build houses, play cards, and you have to manage all of these things, as well as you need workers to do those. You need workers with skills to do those. And we're gonna talk a lot more about this game in this video, so we should jump to the first question, which is, who would you get this for? Three, two, one. Resourceful gamers. Multitaskers. This game is all about resources. Getting the right resources at the right time and using them. And gamers because, well, it's not very simple. I don't think you will teach it to anybody. It's not too difficult, but you probably will have to have played at least a few board games before this. Yeah. Well, mine's multitasking. You get your hand of six cards. Okay, I want to build this ship, but I also want to build this card from my hand. And I also kind of want to go after that track to be first to get either that card or that card. And I need to get to wood somehow. So there's so many things that kind of are separate, but you need to think about them at the same time. So you have to be a good multitasker. What are the three best things about this game? The third best thing about this game for me is going to be the length. 16 minute game it says on the box. Yep. Which I agree it is. Maybe with five players the first time it might take longer. But once you know the game it's going to be less than 16 minutes. This gives you the feel of a full-fledged Euro game. Yes. Resources, cards, building, ships, drafting, market, tracks. It's a real heavy Euro. No, it's not heavy and it's definitely not long, but it feels like there's so many options. You never stock so many decisions. It's just almost like a Euro filler. My third best thing is player count because it's playable from one to five. Brilliant and almost the same at all of these player counts. I played it solo, I played it with four, I played it with two, and all of those gameplays were really, really fun. Also, I didn't need to read another solo rulebook or anything. Almost nothing changes except a few really, really small things. So if you were a solo player, really good. If you also would from time to time play with this with more people, great, it works. Flow of the sea. <laughs> at first, we all draft pretty much at the same time. Then we play at the same time. Then it's just a little bit of like bookkeeping and we're ready to go for the next round. Game really flows like a river, like a sea. Yeah. I didn't have enough room. Started out <laughs> with large letters and then went real small. But uh, number two for me is accomplishments. You get tons of combos. You can build a hut, then place like a villager in there, and then you make this worker placement action much, much stronger. You can have multiple of them. Because of that, you can buy stronger ships. There's a lot of these combos that you feel like, I made that. Yeah. I dropped these cards, I played those cards, I got those resources, I figured it out, and tons of these cards just make you feel really good and actions make you feel good. So my first and best thing about this game is gonna be MUC. Much universe cards? Almost, multi-use cards. I always like games where each card can be used in multiple ways. So I could build this as a ship, 
or I could discard this as two coins. Always cool that you have multiple uses for cards and sometimes you will sacrifice this card just to get that one resource or there are no dead cards. Every card that you draft, even though it's not specifically what you needed at that point, is still absolutely useful. I love when you can do a lot of things with little amount of yeah. stuff. Why this game might not be for you? Number one, MUC, you know what that means? Multi-universe cards? There's multi-use cards and it's quite difficult sometimes to explain these right away and also understand. And if you haven't played like Euro resource Euro games, then this might be a bit too difficult. And I'm gonna jump on that, it's just too many. Part of that is the cards. At first, it feels like there's too many of everything. Yeah. Too many resources, too many cards, too many choices, too many decisions. First time you play, it can be daunting, even for a gamer. If you play it for the first time, you just have to wing it. Second time you play, immediately thing is much simpler. Yeah. I love these board games that really challenges you, and this one does. Another one is slim margin of error. If at the right time you don't get that resource because you kind of messed up and didn't pick that right card, yeah. you're kind of stuck. For example, you want to build this ship, you have almost everything except that one resource and it feels like I have a bunch of these resources, I'm so inefficient, I can't do anything. Quite punishing this one. You have to be on point almost all the time. Why are you here? There is no direct interaction. Yeah, it's a drafting game, but you're not gonna really hate draft. It's much. really difficult to follow yeah. along what you have and yeah. what parts you need, so, so yeah, drafting here doesn't work. It's but. very multiplayer solitary. It might be a good thing for those who like to play together but don't want, you know, anybody else to really mess with you. And I have a last thing, uh, which is grass is always greener, because sometimes you can individually work here and feel like, oh, I'm pretty doing pretty good, and then look to the other side of the table and somebody has three times more resources. You don't know the scores until the end of the game, which yeah. is uh, quite nice for this one, but yeah. you really can feel sometimes that I just don't produce enough, and you can quite see it like in the, almost in the second round that you're kind of lagging behind, and it's really hard to catch up. Sometimes can also be daunting because of that, because, you know, they are doing so much better. I'm one of those people who wants to control how the game flows to be sure that everyone understands the rules and does everything correctly. Neat freak? Is that the word? No, I'm not neat freak. Rules freak, maybe. You might not enjoy this experience because everything's happening at the same time. People discarding cards, drawing cards, taking resources, just grabbing stuff and yeah, you're like... Absolutely. Ah, it's a so generally, all of these things that we have just written down just means you have to be really a gamer to play it. A simple game that's really challenging to play. Three, two, one. Not something to worry about. Filler up. It's comparatively quick game with tons of cards and I really tried out different strategies and they work. So nothing that I personally worry about for sure. Cards are gonna come up differently. You're never gonna have the same hand of cards twice in a row. So you're gonna have to adjust to different strategies. More importantly, feeling wise, I wanna play it again. And yeah. when you finish the game, you feel like, hey, let's do another one. What is the best alternative? Three, two, one, Hadrian's Wall. Yeah, Hadrian's Wall are these two pages that uh, you just use your resources to fill in each, each row and get more and more stuff from it. When you get that stuff, you can then again use them to fill out these pages. And the better you fill them out, the more points you have and then win. Also a solitary experience that you mentioned, this as well. I would play this game with similar people. If you don't like like the roll and write feel with the papers, this is really good alternative, yeah. I feel like. I meant just the seven wonders. It's also a drafting game. It plays up to seven players. Everyone drafts at the same time. There are a ton of different icons. There are also resources, except they're not like resources this way. They're on the cards. There is money though that you can spend to buy resources, just like here. You have your own tableau that you're building. It is different enough I mean, they're essentially this different games, not not too close. And now, the final rating. Three, two, one. Fantastic. Fantastically good. So essentially, very good plus. I mean, it is a very good game. It's not gonna be something I'm gonna wait in the next game night to play. It is easy to pull out of the... Uh, where do you pull the board games out of? Shelf?
So it's easy to pull out of the shelf and just set it up and play. Yes, it's a bit tough to get into the first time you play, but it's still much easier, for example, like the heavier Euro games. But it gives you the feel of that heavier Euro game. Not gonna be the de next great masterpiece of a board game, even though it's really good and solid, but it's easy to get to the table. And sometimes I think that's the most important part of a board game. I think my rating would be really good, but the solo play pumped it up to fantastic. These kind of games with resources and just being efficient is my kind of thing. I would like hate drafting to be a bit more of a thing. I, mean, I guess I'm not that smart to use hate drafting in this one to follow everything. I always feel fantastic when playing it. And there's the rating. All games are not for everybody. For me, it's freaking what? fantastic. What do you mean not all? games are. You don't have to buy all the games, Yanis, okay? It's you're telling me now? So, you'd say that you're a fan of this game, right? I'm really a fan of this game. Do you know what this is? A ship. Yes, so what do you say what just happened? Ship hit the fan. Ship hit the fan. Ship hit the fan. So make sure a ship doesn't hit the fan and support us so we can make more of these videos and uh, have lots more fun here. Yes, as you can see, there's ways to go. Yeah. That's all for this ship. See you next time. Bye.